Hey, Gators and sports fans, get all your Gator talk, news, analysis, and opinions on the Pod Up with Matthews in the morning podcast. Find us on your favorite podcast platform or watch us on Facebook Live between 8 a.m. and 9 a.m. every weekday. Pod Up, because we are Gator fans. So say, it's great to be a Florida Gator. Good morning and welcome to a Thursday edition of the program. It's Pot Up with Matthews in the morning from the Crime Prevention Security System Studios, large enough to serve you, small enough to care. We got a recorded show today, folks, for you. We are going to have Brent Beard, our college football analyst on, uh, on the Titan Tomorrow Hotline. Second portion of today's program, we'll be talking to Pizza Bill Feinberg, um, who uh, has a lot to do with the Gator football program for many, many years. He's running uh, the uh, Willie Jackson Leonard George, Leonard George Endowment Golf Tournament, which will be held uh, the first weekend in April, I believe. So we'll talk to him a little bit about that as well, how you can help out or maybe play in that. But first, let's go to the Titan MR Hotline. And we're joined by our good friend, our college football analyst, Brent Beard. You can follow him on Twitter at Brent Beard. Good morning, Brent. How are you? Shane, it's a wonderful time of year, is it not, where we have a uh, virtually a handful of teams start spring practice. Uh, uh, some have already started. Some will begin. Uh, we're within probably a couple weeks of a whole lot of teams already being in practice. Got hoops going on uh, with the SEC tournament around the corner. So uh, and, and some spring weather. That's not bad, is it? No, this is a great time of the year, as you mentioned, spring football cranking up, but you got all the conference tournaments that have started this week. Next week, the big boys start playing, and then the NCAA tournament, then the Masters. So uh, next couple of weeks, we'll have a lot to talk about and some good stuff to watch. But as you mentioned, spring football has started for a lot of schools around the country. Tell us some of them that have already started practice. Um, Some of the uh, ACC schools have, Boston College, Georgia Tech, Nebraska, in Pitt, now there will be about a dozen others that begin practice later this week. <laughs> the The amazing thing about it is uh, uh, about uh, Coastal Carolina having their spring game <laughs> today on Thursday, uh, which is a bit amusing, but uh, some of them like to start early and to uh, finish uh, early too, so uh, it you know then in coaches some like to start early, some like to start late. It's up to them, but uh, uh, but, but regardless, this is good for us. Yeah, speaking of Coastal Carolina, Jamie Caldwell's done a tremendous job there. I'm yeah. a little surprised that like some of the bigger uh, non-power five schools haven't approached him. Are you? He has been mentioned. Uh, for some jobs in the past, uh, I think there may be a little bit of uh, hesitation uh, with him being at Coastal Carolina. But they've done look, they've done a nice job. And Shane, you know, if you can coach, you can coach, regardless what level it's on. I still think that's going to happen. And again, Jamie's still one of the younger head coaches, uh, so I, th- I think that's coming along. Uh, but he, as you have success. He'll be up for jobs, and, and uh, I, I'm, I'm uh, look. I'm guessing that it's I'm not saying he's coming to the SEC, but he'll he'll get some looks very soon. Uh, SEC media days have been released on what coaches go on what days. It's in Atlanta this year, correct? It is, uh, which uh, yeah, people have mixed emotions about that. We were in Atlanta just a few years ago. Um, I mean, it, there's there's some advantages of being Atlanta as far as you're in the College Football Hall of Fame, but yet when you're in Birmingham, you're in um, – you never really leave the building. In Atlanta, you end up having to do that because oh, um, we had to walk outside to go to the next building during the thunderstorm. It's not, <laughs> it's not a whole lot of fun, but – uh, I think what is interesting, you've got three uh, on Monday, July the 18th, uh, LSU, Ole Miss, and Missouri, and on Tuesday the uh, uh, the 19th, um, Alabama, Mississippi State, South Carolina, and Vanderbilt. 
Wednesday the 20th, Arkansas, Florida, Georgia, and Kentucky, and then you end with Auburn, Tennessee, and A&M. That is the latest a Gator coach has been in a while, Shane, uh, mm-hmm. frankly. So Atlanta this year and next year will be Nashville. Yeah, I um, do you like – I mean, as you mentioned earlier, it, it was held so many years in, in uh, Birmingham, and, the, you know, you can stay right there. Everything is there. Um, when it it's in Nashville, is it kind of in the same place in like a convention center? Well, it, it, uh, I'll be very curious what they do. Uh, we have not been in Nashville yet, so oh, okay. that will be very interesting uh, to see where that's going to go. I, I, I frankly think wherever they have it, it, it will probably um, be, um, I, I, I think, really – uh, I'm sure probably downtown somewhere. Uh, that hopefully they will have ample parking. As you can imagine, downtown Atlanta can be a challenge, oh, uh, yes. to say the least. Right, Shane. So uh, and and afterwards, I mean, you hear that they're going to have it somewhere in Texas and out west, um, a little bit more to kind of take it on the road. We hear, and this is just a rumor at this point, that at some point it may even be a night event, meaning that a lot of these coaches and players will be available at night for prime time. Um, so uh, it, it will be interesting to see where it goes. And I, But I do hope it gets back to Birmingham at some point. Yeah, I think it's the best place to have it. Um, attendance around college football, even in the SEC, has – a de- decrease in the numbers of people attending games. Uh, it continues to go down. This is a problem uh, with athletic directors, and it's multifaceted, frankly. There are a bunch of reasons for this. Uh, one, obviously, is price, as tickets go higher and higher. Um, another, uh, and fans were actually polled on this a few years ago, and it was either number one or close to being number one, if you can believe this, but I do, is uh, the the number one reason fans didn't want to go to games is they wanted connectivity with their phones. Uh, in some stadiums, you didn't have that as much. Uh, now, the, <laughs> the big screen at home with the couch and the refrigerator uh, has a lot to do with this, too. I, I do think if we can ever expand the playoffs, that's going to get more excitement and more people in the stands uh, in November, particularly uh, because they think they've, their teams have got a chance. Uh, so, uh, But at the same time, certainly TV ratings, I don't think, have been hurt by this necessarily as much as it is uh, well, with getting people to games. Uh, and, and Shane, as you can tell, uh, for uh, if you're an athletic director, it is a real challenge over the next few years to do this. Yeah, there's no question. Uh, Brent, you know, we talk about it every week at the transfer portal. Um, run it down one more time so everybody knows there are deadlines for certain conferences yes. when they can do this and when they can do that. Yeah, and I think this is helpful to do it. The, the, dead, the deadline for fall and winter sports – is May 1 uh, every year. The deadline for spring sports is July 1 um, every year. Uh, now, there are times when the athletes have to set out. They have to set out a year when they transfer to a Division One school for the second time. Remember, they get the basically the free transfer, and then after that, you've got to set out a year. So that's one thing they've got to – Realize, and there's also an intra INTRA conference timeline. In order to gain immediate eligibility, a student athlete will need to declare his or her intent to transfer by February 1 for fall sports, May 1 for winter sports, and July 1 for spring sports. So um, I, I think it's important for people to know some of those dates. Uh, in order to where, look, this thing's not governed like it needs to be. 
but uh, there are some things you've got to keep in mind here. There's rumors out there that Kirk Herbstreet, the college football analyst, may be calling some Thursday night NFL games. Well, Herb and Chris Fowler have done uh, games before, and they have done well. Now, there is uh, something in his contract that would allow him to call uh, NFL games for Amazon if he wanted to do it. Now, one of the things we need to remember here is the NFL is that they're going to have a Thursday night game on Amazon, which means it will be streaming. So, so how do I get so how do I get that game on my TV, Brent? <laughs> well, well, that's a great, great question. Um, I, I'm sure that I'm I'm sure my seven year old granddaughter can tell you faster than I can. Absolutely. Uh, to be uh, to be honest with you, now uh, now, uh, now Kurt, get this, Shane, is under contract with ESPN for around six million per year. Crazy. So. Man. Uh, it is, uh, but he and he is easily uh, one of the highest uh, ESPN um, uh, celebrities, shall we say, uh, with this. I, I just wonder, now you know and I know when you're doing a game, uh, he's doing a Saturday game, uh, he will be, uh, he'll have to be there the day before, I'm guessing, if you're doing a Thursday game, Shane, in the NFL, wouldn't you have to be there by Wednesday night? Something like that. I, I, um, I, you know, I, I look. This is a, this would be a great problem for all of us to have uh, in, in a situation like this. Uh, but I, I think that's one of those things. I think his, I think his sons are, are uh, they're older now. And I'm sure that would have a lot to do with it. But again, what what a wonderful problem to have, right? <laughs> yeah, it, he would need to be there on Wednesday to, for the walkthrough yeah. to talk to the quarterback, talk to the coaches and all that stuff, just like he does for the college games. Ruse Ogre State Farm Office is a team of dedicated insurance professionals ready to help life go right with the right insurance options for you and your family. They offer the essential needs of auto insurance, home insurance, and life and health insurance and more. Just ask. Visit ogreinsurance.com or call them today at 352-240-1779. Speaking with Brent Beard on the Titan Hammer Hotline, again, we are, this is a tape program. Uh, we'll be joined by Bill Feinberg uh, talking about the Leonard George Willie Jackson Senior Endowment Golf Tournament being held uh, the 1st of April. Uh, Brent, let's go ahead and switch gears and, and jump into the conference. Uh, sure. Some things going on in Tuscaloosa. Well, as far as Alabama is concerned, uh, um, uh, they are, uh, and if people have not heard this, Todd Grantham, yes, that Todd mm -hmm. Grantham, uh, is going to be an analyst uh, in Alabama. Uh, now, what people need to realize here, there's a big deal that's made out of this, uh, but really, it, it, it's not that he's going to be a coordinator. When we talk about an analyst, I remember being in the press box not long ago, and several of the analysts came in. They were basically wearing the same thing. They were grabbing a quick bite to eat. Uh, and and one of the Alabama media who would know this, I asked him, what, what do they do and what do they make? And he said that they make anywhere, I'm curious if you heard something different, from forty to 60000 and that they have got Either they share an office or have a cubicle or something. It's not a glamour job, but you are involved with the team. And when you see, Shane, when you see this stuff on Twitter, Twitter can make people look like uh, that they're in one job and that that they actually are a glorified uh, as far as a coach or a, or a uh, coordinator but but that's not the case here so i think for todd grantham he kind of gets to hear another voice uh i think that that will be interesting now not only has todd grantham joined uh zach mentberger the former lsu quarterback Derek dooley yes that Derek dooley who was at tennessee 
and was a Cowboys tight ends coach, I believe, for a while. So they are on the staff. Uh, one loss for Alabama is Alabama's director for sports science, Matt Ray, is heading to New Orleans. Uh, now, David Blue is going to be staying there. He is the director of sports performance. But Ray and Blue really were given a lot of credit the last couple of years for what they've done in Alabama and, and reducing injuries and so forth. So thought that was uh, a bit very interesting uh, uh, about his departure. I'm sure Nick Saban will, will fill that void. And uh, in a sad note, uh, back in 1974, Alabama was playing LSU, uh, TCU, and they had a running back named Kent Waldrop. Long story short, he got hurt in the game and ended up being paralyzed. I believe he uh, he ducked his head, and then forced him when he made the tackle. And that that's what happened. Credit given to Paul Bear Bryant, the former Alabama coach, who frankly raised a lot of money for research afterwards. And Paul Bear Bryant um, had. Uh, a scholarship where um, uh, basically sons and daughters of former players could go to Alabama, and they were able to give this to Kent Waldrop's two sons, Trey and Charlie. But Waldrop died this week, um, so certainly um, prayers for his family. And, and, I, and Shane, you may not have any recollection of that story at all, but uh, I remember be- actually being at that game uh, and, and frankly, was pretty impressed with how Alabama stepped up to the plate to help Waldrop and his family over the last few years. Yeah, that's a great story. And back to the analyst. Hey, it varies on their pay, but maybe remind me of my last year in the league in 2006 when Saban was the head coach of the Dolphins. Derek Dooley was on that staff as a tight ends coach. Um, so it's right. you know it's all about who you know. You know, the, the other coaches on that staff was a guy named Mike Malarkey, a guy named Jason Garrett, a guy named Will Muschamp, a guy named Kirby Smart. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> there are a lot of coaches that people know that were on that oh, yeah. Miami Dolphins staff. Uh, what's Absolutely. going on with the with the Hogs up in uh, Fayetteville? Well, uh, I think with uh, – one of the things to look for uh, with Arkansas – uh, would be, and I and I give Mike Huguenin credit for this, as he looked at some guys uh, at different schools. And Arkansas is one of those who is going to replace Traylon Burks. Traylon Burks was one of the better wide receivers in the league. Uh, I, mean, I mean, it was amazing how well he did this year. Had 66 um, catches uh, at this point. The leading returning receiver is Warren Thompson, the Florida, the former Florida State transfer who had 19 catches. Jaden Hazelwood uh, is out of Oklahoma from the portal, um, and, and, uh, and he may be a guy that can really contribute with them too. They've got three other freshman wide receivers, and there's some holdovers. Kendall Bryan's, uh, Bryles comes back. Not his dad, Art, but Kendall uh, yeah. as offensive coordinator, and that's huge for them. And and again, um, uh, and I'm curious, Shane, what you thought of KJ Jefferson, but uh, dual threat. I understand they're going to have him lose some weight this year, uh, and uh, and he's. I mean, he's got a good arm. He's got good legs. Um, uh, look, this team's going to be dangerous again this year, I believe. Yeah, I think he does need to lose some weight. There's no question about that. Speaking of our brows, if people missed it, he was hired by Hugh Jackson at Grambling to be the offensive coordinator. Didn't even have a cup of coffee there. A lot of turmoil there, so he already resigned. Uh, do you think he'll ever coach again, Brent? I doubt it. I mean, we never say never, but in this day and age, and I've got two daughters in their 20s, so I certainly get this, but – uh, we're just in the culture now that that hopefully will not um, uh, at all um, condone violence toward women, uh, and I think that, that that's what's happened to Bryles. Um, and it was frankly 
um, difficult for them, and he decided to go ahead and resign. Now, uh, people may miss this, but he was actually a high school coach uh, mm-hmm. for, um, uh, I think, a season, but maybe two, at least one. And he had some problem with the with the high school. Now, it wasn't what he had at Baylor, uh, which was basically football players just kind of running the show. Uh, but I think he had an ineligible player, and there was something else that that was relatively minor that happened. Uh, so I, I think that's a good question. Look, he's a good football mind. There's no doubt about that. But because of uh, the era that we're in now, Sh- Shane, I, I I would be surprised if he played again uh, uh, or if he coaches again. Would you? Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's going to happen. If, if you can't, if the swag runs you out of there you probably ain't going to last. Um, right. The University of Florida starting their spring practice, I think March 15th. Uh, Billy continues to hire people with these lovely titles. I love them. Uh, but Billy Gonzalez has found a spot. He has. Uh, he's going to FAU, uh, longtime assistant in the SEC. He was with the Gators twice, LSU and Mississippi State. He actually recruited Percy Harvin to Florida uh, and some other receivers. So uh, hopefully that will be uh, helpful uh, for uh, Billy Gonzalez to stay in the game and will be interesting to see where he goes from there. What's going on with the Georgia Bulldogs? It's like, oh, Eric Gilbert's going to come back to the team. Well, people wondered about Eric Gilbert. Um, he, he has been with them, I understand, since uh, January. So he, he is working out with them, Gilbert, 6'5", 250. Uh, I mean, he's had a really difficult last two years, to say the least. Now, he was he left L- LSU after what we understand was he, he was homesick, committed to Florida, flipped to Georgia, left Georgia in August. Um, they have stood by him, um, so they need him, frankly. And boy, um, and they're going to with the with the um, uh, tight ends they've got coming back. He's quite an addition, uh, to say the least, with the Bronc Bowers uh, in that crew. Uh, that one of the big things that happened with Georgia over the last few days is they they hire North Carolina's Stacy Serrells as the offensive line coach, he worked at Georgia years ago in 07 to 2010. He's been at Texas, Virginia Tech, and Miami. And then he was at North Carolina uh, from 2019 until recently. I mean, he's he's got a pretty good reputation as a coach. Georgia fans have kind of reacted to this in a non <laughs> frankly, in a non-favorable way, yeah, that they're looked at it like, well, he's been a lot of these different places. Why can't he stay somewhere for a long period of time? Look, these things happen. Sometimes, you, um, as Shane can tell you, you're, you're at a place for a long period of time. There are others where you kind of lily pad from place to place. Uh, but I think the main thing is, uh, this is who Kirby wanted, and this is who Kirby got. So, if you're a Georgia fan, you need to coach your and, and respect what your coach decides with this. Yeah, um, Ole Miss has given Lane Kiffin a lot of money to spread around to himself and to uh, his coaching staff, a little over eleven million dollars. Uh, he did a tremendous job in the transfer portal. How do you see the Rebels playing out this year? Uh, look, as long as he's there, I think they will. Uh, be very good. I mean, they've had some really good transfers. Jackson Dart from Southern Cal. Uh, Zach Evans, a running back. Dart's a quarterback. Um, so I think that, and then Michael Trigg from Southern Cal is a tight end. JJ Peaks from Auburn, if people might remember, he's like close to 300 pounds. They use him as a running back. And it uh, tight end, uh, it's in various places. Uh, so uh, I I think again that they will be good. Uh, TCU junior defensive lineman Kari Coleman 
Ole Miss transferred to uh, uh, transferred to Ole Miss, entered the transfer portal just over a week ago, and and is ended up at Ole Miss. So, uh, at, look uh, for our listeners, Shane and I both have thought for for a while if they could if, how good they could be uh, in Oxford with Lane Kiffin uh, if their front seven could start to improve and I think we're beginning to see that Shane. Yeah it's going to be uh, interesting to see who plays quarterback for them uh, next year as well. Um, Brent uh, we'll we'll get back to some of the teams because I know you're going to give us some nuggets before we get you out of here but gosh I didn't really realize until I saw this in writing here there's some dang good football games in the month of September. Uh, Yeah there really are Um, and that's one of the Great things that that you can look forward to. Uh, top non-conference games in September: Georgia, Oregon, and we know Dan Lanning now is at Oregon, uh, so that's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Uh, I still say that Utah, Florida game is, and I'm curious what you've heard on this, but as far as just fan reaction, I talked to a lot of fans at the gym and at church and places like that, they're very concerned about that game, and I think they need to be, frankly. Utah oh, yeah. is a really good team, uh, to say the least. To me, they're an SEC team playing out west. Uh, Alabama-Texas, uh, that game's in Austin. Uh, two games have gone under the radar. Uh, Miami is playing at a and M. Uh, mm-hmm. the Hurricanes there, so that would be interesting for Mario Cristobal. And, and listen, give Arkansas a lot of credit. They're playing Cincinnati this year uh, at uh, Fayetteville. Uh, that's going to be a good game. So uh, I know that I know there are more of them, Shane, but that's five pretty good ones there. Yeah, it's outstanding. You mentioned the opener against Utah. Uh, I know people are going to be excited. Uh, Utah is going to come in here about number six or seven in America. Yep, we haven't yep. heard a game time yet. Obviously, that will come later on. But I got to think you hope it's around 1 o'clock uh, just because of the heat uh, and the humidity uh, yeah. to, to I, hurt I, the Shane, Shane, that's a really attractive game with, mm. with Billy Napier's opener. I, look, I'm not saying this is going to happen, but I wonder if they may not put that game – uh, maybe even on another day. I, I'm not saying they put it on Thursday night, uh, but I, but you know, on, on Labor Day weekend, you've got games Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Right. Now, uh, I'm pretty sure FSU, LSU, and New Orleans, I believe that's your Monday night game of that weekend. I, I uh, Shane, I, look, again, I, we're not saying this is going to happen. We're just playing with it a minute. Uh, I'm just wondering for a, for a game like that, how interesting that would be on Labor Day weekend if you had that game on like a Sunday night. Yeah, you're right. We we shall see. Um, they could move it to that day. We'll we'll have to wait and see. Brent, give us some nuggets before we get you out of here. Yep, always glad to be able to uh, uh, to do that. Uh, and and I, I know Shane's talked about this, um, and I'll just mention again briefly, Auburn hired former Pittsburgh senior wide receiver uh, coach Ike Hilliard uh, to serve in the same capacity. They've really struggled at wide receiver, and this is going to be a challenge for Ike. I don't know how, how well you know him uh, right now and as far as his NFL career, uh, and I'll let you comment on this in a minute, but the um, – uh, that that's something Auburn needs to really get going again uh, at wide receiver because they have really struggled there. Kentucky has a new um, offensive coordinator who comes from the 49ers, uh, their quarterback coach, Rich Scangalero. Uh, now, Liam Cohen is going back to the Rams. He did a tremendous job at Kentucky, uh, and I know that uh, when – um, Mark Stoops introduced his staff. He gave um, Liam Cohen a lot of credit uh, for what they did there uh, it, it, during that time, too. Uh, I know Missouri has hired some new coaches. 
Um, the uh, Blake Baker is replacing defense coordinator Steve Wilkes and linebacker coach DJ Smith. It's going to be the co-defensive coordinator. They're trying to figure out what they're going to do at quarterback with Brady Cook and Tyler Macon or a couple of guys. Jay, watch this one. Jaden Daniels of Arizona State made a visit. Not saying he's going there, but he did make a visit, which which was interesting uh, that he did. South Carolina's done well with transfers. I won't go into all of them, but Spencer Rattler from Oklahoma at quarterbacks, the biggest one. Tennessee uh, has two. Gerald Mincy uh, from Florida. Jackson Hanna from Nebraska. Charlie Browder from UCF uh, or a few. So uh, we have, we all have all kinds of notes. I know we're short on time, but appreciate having the chance to get some of those in there. Absolutely, Brent. Great stuff as always. We appreciate you joining the program. Have a great weekend. You too, brother. Take care. And that's Brent Beard, our college football analyst. Join us on the Titan Amore Hotline. You can follow Brent on Twitter at Brent Beard. Going to take a time out, come back. We're going to be joined by Pizza Bill Feinberg talking about the Willie Jackson Sr. Leonard George, George Endowment Golf Tournament being held at the University of Florida Golf Course. You're watching and listening to Pilot with Matthews in the morning. We want to take this moment to thank all our sponsors who keep the show going and pay the bills. Crime Prevention Security Systems, large enough to serve you, small enough to care. Titan MRI, Gainesville's only locally owned and operated MRI facility. Meldon Law, won't back down. Peachland Dental, Gator Nation's first choice for dentistry in Port Charlotte. Comfort Temp, comfort is our business, peace of mind is our promise. QC Kinetics, live pain-free with QC Kinetics. Great Clips, it's gonna be great. Our gridiron sponsors are Auto ER, UF Bookstores, Celebration Point Town Center, South State Bank, Chris Doring Mortgage, Silverback Concrete Co. Some of our touchdown sponsors are Campus USA Credit Union, Adams Rib Company, Doreen Weeby Realtor, Caldwell Banker, M.M. Parish, Gator Dominoes, Celebrate Primary Care, Gator Bait Media, Okito America, Style Cuts, Big Mills Cheese Steaks. If you are interested in promoting your business on the show, visit potupwithshane.com and click the Advertise button. Again, thank you to all the great businesses that support the show. If you like what we are doing here, make sure you follow us and support the businesses that support us. Steve Spurrier here. You know, making a reservation at my restaurant is easier than a Saturday afternoon homecoming game against Vandy. You don't have to call or email. Just go to Spurriers.com, hit the reservation button, pick a date, number of guests, and a time. It's so simple, I can do it. In fact, I just did. Maybe I'll see you tonight. Welcome back to the Crime Prevention Security System Studios. Large enough to serve you, small enough to care. Celebration points where the Gators go to celebrate with premium brands like Nike, Regal Cinemas, Lay Macaron, Bass Pro Shops, International Diamond Center, Prime and Pearl, and the HPC's Restaurant, Spurs Gridiron Grill. Now serving brunch on Saturdays and Sundays. We'll see you at Celebration Point where the Gators go to celebrate. We're now going to go to the Titan MR Hotline, and we're joined by the world-famous Pizza Bill Feinberg. Uh, former Gator, longtime Gator. Not, not. He's not related to Paul Feinbaum. He's Feinberg. That's right. How you doing, Pizza? Good. He was actually Paul Feinberg, and he changed his name because of the confusion. There you go. There you go. Well, Pizza, we appreciate you taking the time. I've told everybody this is a taped version of our Thursday edition here on Pot Up with Matthews in the morning. I uh, wanted to bring you on because you've been very, very much involved with getting this endowment. And I want you to give us an update because it's been about a year now, I would think, somewhere around, along those lines when y'all started this, uh, how much money was raised to get the endowment rolling, where, where it stands. And then obviously I brought you on because I know there's a big golf tournament, a UF golf course 
coming up to to help out as well. So give us right. a rundown of what's going on. Well, we raised the first 50000 and got the first endowment done. And uh, meeting with the fellows, they wanted to go. The original endowment uh, goal was $250,000. Wanted to raise five scholarships in Willie and Leonard's name. And uh, we're on our way. we got the uh, 2022 uh, golf tournament happening uh, April 2nd, Saturday, at Mark Bostick out there on campus. And uh, it's a shotgun scramble at 930. Uh, we're looking to raise the other 200000 We've got some great sponsors. And we got a lot of the former players coming in. So if you haven't seen Steve Tannen or Carlos Alvarez or Nat Moore or Ralph Ortega, Sammy Green, a lot of my 70s guys who were there, they're going to be coming in along with Wes Chandler and Bill Carr, Don Gaffney. Man, we got a we got a slew of folks coming in, and uh, I think we're even anticipating Chris Collinsworth coming in for this one, which is huge to me. Chris was a, a neighbor of mine in Yon Hall and just a tremendous, uh, tremendous friend. He always stays in touch even when he's busy. So, uh, so back to the golf tournament. Um, you said it's April 2nd there on UF campus at Mark Bostic. Right. Um, where can people, the general public listening to this show, how can they, whether they want to make a donation or if they actually want to show up and play, is there a website or somewhere that they can look yeah, up? Yeah, we got a website and it's committee at gmail.com or w.wjjm.org is the actual website. What I gave you first was the email. Or you can call uh, our treasurer, Melvin Flanoy, at uh, 352-281-0356. and That's 281-0356. Our trusted treasurer, Melvin Flanoy, would be glad to take the donations. And uh, we're looking forward to getting everybody out at Mark Bostic at uh, Shotgun Scramble starting at 930. It's going to be, uh, uh, what's, gonna be what's the uh What's the entry fee into the golf tournament? Well, the entry fee is $250 for individuals, and they've got sponsorships, they've got teams, they've got all kinds of, of great stuff, but the registration is $250 per individual, and we'd love to have you come out there and, and play golf with us and, and meet some of these Gator greats and help us uh, get these endowments. Uh, these endowments are very important. Willie and Leonard were the first two uh, African-American scholarship players signed by Coach Ray Graves and uh, late 1968 and uh, Willie out of Sarasota High School and, and Leonard out of Tampa Jesuit. I just got back, I think it's about three weeks ago, and uh, the Tampa Jesuit team, they did a documentary on Leonard and the team that won the state championship in 1968. Uh, it's fantastic, Shane. Uh, it's on YouTube now. You can uh, Google uh, Jesuit, uh, tampajesuit.org. And the uh, website there has the video on, um, on Leonard and the team. And it's just fantastic. Uh, they had about five to 600 people at the premiere at the Tampa Theater, I guess about three weeks ago now. And uh, great turnout and just a fantastic uh, video uh, documentary about Leonard and what he's been doing with his life after football and, and the team. It's very interesting. The whole team they interviewed and it was a, a, a terrific documentary. I absolutely enjoyed that. And if you really like uh, Tampa uh, Jesuit and uh, Florida high school history, the game between Defuniac and, and Jesuit up there in Defuniac back in 68 for the state championship was quite interesting. And it's a, it's a great story. Absolutely fantastic. At Chris Doring Mortgage, they do mortgage lending right, helping home buyers throughout Gainesville and North Central Florida. Call Chris Doring Mortgage today at 352 244 0840. Speaking with Pizza Bill Feinberg here on the Titan More Hotline, we're talking about the Leonard George Willie, Willie Jackson Sr. endowment. So last year, obviously, I, correct me if I'm wrong, there's kind of a mural painting of these two gentlemen in the swamp now and one of the uh, gate entrances. They also were allowed to, I believe they were Mr. T Mr. Two Bits. Um, right. So it's kind of taken off. And, and obviously, current young people don't have any idea about these guys, but they laid the foundation. As you mentioned, they were the first two African-American athletes to play football at the University of Florida. And it's been a long time coming. So I know this endowment, I mean, it's never easy, but as, as it goes on, more people are understanding what it's all about, correct? 
Correct. People are jumping on board. It, it, it's it's so historic for the University of Florida. Ron Coleman, who who ran track uh, from Ocala, was the actual first African American athlete signed to any type of scholarship at Florida. And Willie and Leonard were uh, the first two football players. So it's very interesting in the history, which is located at Gate Three inside the stadium. They did a beautiful. I guess, photographic mural, and it's uh, very big and very large, and you can't miss it when you walk in the stadium, and it really brought tears to my eyes because I was one of the few guys that was there when they came in and saw what they went through and was part of their group, and and uh, as a 12-year-old hanging out with two 18-year-olds and kind of getting an understanding of what they were going through and, and hanging out with them as, as an equipment guy, you really got an appreciation for the uh, just the timing of what was going on in Alachua County at the time and what was going on at the University of Florida and how uh, integration was taking hold here in Gainesville. So uh, very interesting um, time, two very, very, uh, fine gentlemen who who came to school, got their educations, got their degrees, went on to be productive citizens. Willie had uh, Terry and, and uh, Willie Jr. And he's got a grandson now playing at the University of Florida. And uh, Leonard uh, became a lawyer and uh, worked in Atlanta as a, uh, I believe he was with the state's attorney's office up in Atlanta and, and worked with Maynard Jackson, who was the mayor of Atlanta. So both of these guys have really produced and and we're very proud to have them as alumni of the University of Florida. And the Athletic Association has done a, a very nice job catching up and doing the right thing to to recognize these guys in the stadium with a beautiful uh, photographic mural and gives kind of a historic timeline. And uh, I, I urge everybody, especially the younger football players, to understand these guys were real trailblazers and kind of led the way for guys like Nat Moore and Wes Chandler and uh, Wayne Fields and Sammy Green and John Williams, uh, Jimmy DeBose, all the guys that were the second wave, actually, which was Coach Dickey's uh, second recruiting class there at Florida, where he really uh, raised the bar and brought in quite a few African-American athletes. It's a back to the endowment. I remember when this this was launched uh, a year ago or so. I remember you could call Gator Boosters and you could just give them your credit card or whatever and say, I want to give $500 to the endowment. Then they mail you off a, a tax deductible deal. Can you still do that? I believe so. You can still do that. Call Garrett Bell at 352-375-4683, extension 5000. Tell them you want to give to the uh, Leonard George Willie Jackson endowment, and I'm sure they'll be able to get you all set up there. Garrett handles that endowment, and I'm sure she'd be glad to take your money. <laughs> and then uh, back to the golf tournament. Uh, as you said, it's April 2nd at Mark Bostic. Um, obviously, it's a scramble. Uh, will y'all have a silent auction or any type of deal like Man, that? Man, got on? all kinds of stuff. Silent auctions. I just put the order in for those uh, jerseys today. I got uh, I got mini helmets we're going to have signed, and we're going to have just a a plethora of gators out there. So uh, they're going to have auctions and they've got all kinds of great stuff planned. We've got a pairing party uh, Friday night, April 1st at Spurrier's. I'll be doing the music there and uh, just looking forward to have a great weekend, getting everybody back together and uh, making things happen for this uh, endowment. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm going to miss that. I already have uh, something scheduled to be out of town. Um, I want to get your thoughts. You've been a part of the program for so many years or been around the program. Billy Napier has come in. I know you've been in contact with him. Just give me your initial thoughts for our listeners, uh, because you've had a lot of conversations with him. I think he's sharp as heck. I think he's very genuine. What does Pizza Bill think about Billy Napier? Absolutely. From the first time I met him uh, every day. He's uh, he is the real deal. He is as cerebral a human being as I've been uh, honored to be around. And he came in with a plan and he is executing his plan to a T. He's got a group of people there that are outgoing. They have embraced the players. I've been over to a few workouts and, and watched. And I mean, this coaching staff and the administrative staff 
and all the people that are working there are busting a hump to really make this a special place. Um, he is going to bring such an attitude and such a, what I call, what the fellas call swag to, to this program that I don't think we've ever seen uh, except maybe during Coach Spurrier's tenure. But he is a rising star, and I think this is the right guy at the right time for Florida football. I am, I am praying and hoping and wishing that this, this man has the most success of, of any coach in the history of Florida football, and I've been around quite a few of them. Well, let's hope so. If you've got joint pain in your knees, shoulders, hip, or back that won't go away, you need to check out QC Kinetics for long lasting relief. No surgery, drugs, or downtime. Schedule a free consultation at QC Kinetics. Give them a call. Pizza, you may need to call them. 352-400-4550. You got any aches and pains? Oh, man, the knees are starting to go. That, that AstroTurf <laughs> ate me up in the old days. But uh, for an old man, I'm doing pretty good, Shane. I, I can't complain. The health's good. And been working on my helmets in the background here, ran up on some autograph balls from the 90s group. I got found uh, one of my friends got six Gator autograph balls from the 90s, 92, 93, 94, 95 SEC championship autograph balls here. I've been cleaning those up and getting those ready and working on my helmet collection and just always staying busy with something geared towards Florida, Shane. You know me. There's no question. If any of our listeners need any kind of old school Gator stuff, Pizza Bill is your man. All right, before we let you go and get you out of here, one more time, the website for people to uh, participate in the golf tournament. W dot W J J M dot O R G. That's W jjm.org and they can give me a call at 352-870-5143 if they have questions or Melvin Flanoy at 352-281-0356 Good stuff as always we appreciate your time Pizza Bill we appreciate everything you do my man Appreciate you having me on Shane always a pleasure I know your ratings go up exponentially when I'm on so no just want to say hello to all my fans Thank you for all the uh, accolades and all the Facebook and Instagram uh, hits. We appreciate that. <laughs> Good stuff, Pizza. Take care, my man. All right. Take care of yourself. That's Pizza Bill. Join us on the Tight No More Hotline. I'm going to take our final time out on this Thursday edition. Come up, come back, and wrap it up. You're watching and listening to Pot Up with Matthews in the morning. We want to take this moment to thank all our sponsors who keep the show going and pay the bills. Crime Prevention Security Systems, large enough to serve you, small enough to care. Titan MRI, Gainesville's only locally owned and operated MRI facility. Meldon Law, won't back down. Peachland Dental, Gator Nation's first choice for dentistry in Port Charlotte. Comfort Temp, comfort is our business, peace of mind is our promise. QC Kinetics, live pain-free with QC Kinetics. Great Clips, it's gonna be great. Our Gridiron sponsors are Auto ER, UF Bookstores, Celebration Point Town Center, South State Bank, Chris Doring Mortgage, Silverback Concrete Co. Some of our touchdown sponsors are MB Listing, McDonald's of Gainesville, My IT Masters, Gainesville Neon and Signs, 84 Lumber, Tropical Smoothie Cafe, Avery and Smith, Dowling Signs, Baker's Sporting Goods, Ruse Ogra Agent, State Farm Insurance, Silver Q Billiards and Sports Bar. If you are interested in promoting your business on the show, visit potupwithshane.com and click the advertise button. Again, thank you to all the great businesses that support the show. If you like what we are doing here, make sure you follow us and support the businesses that support us. Are you tired of being sidelined by nagging pain? Hi, I'm Emmett Smith, Hall of Famer and Dance with the Stars champion. Happy to tell you about QC Kinetics and their biologic therapies for treating pain without drugs or surgery. Are you suffering from chronic pain in your hips, knees, shoulder, or lower back? Are you tired of living with arthritis pain? QC Kinetics offers natural pain treatment that can repair and restore damaged tissue in your joints. Listen, I know pain, and I've seen firsthand how powerful biologic therapies can be. Patients at QC Kinetics rave about their results because they're getting their lives back. They're getting moving again. 
These exciting regenerative treatments used to be available only to pro athletes like Emmett. Now they're available to anyone thanks to QC Kinetics. Call today for your free consultation. Get long-lasting results from my friends at QC Kinetics. Call QC Kinetics 352-400-4550. In North Central Florida, call 352-400-4550. QC Kinetics 352-400-4550. Welcome back to the Crime Prevention Security System Studios, large enough to serve you, small enough to care. At South State Bank, we understand that small businesses need a community business partner they can rely on. South State has four convenient Alachua County locations. South State Bank, banking four, member FDIC. Uh, Let's get to this day in sports brought to you by our good friends at Comfort Temp. Comfort is our business. Peace of mind is our promise. Comfort Temp's hiring team members with all levels of experience, great culture benefits, $1,000 signing bonus for qualified positions. Give them a call, 352-376-2366, especially to get that AC rolling for the summertime. This day in sports in 1983, the Pittsburgh Steelers quarterback Terry Bradshaw is admitted to the hospital for surgery to repair his throwing arm under the alias, quote, Tom Brady. I think that's very interesting because Tom Brady wasn't around in 1983. I don't know if that's true or not. I'm going to ask Buddy Martin because he's very close to Terry Bradshaw. Um, But that's this day in sports brought to you by our good friends at Comfort Tim. Uh, Tomorrow's program, we'll have JC. We'll uh, recap some basketball. Look forward to the weekend. Uh, Also, we're going to have Chris Harry from FloridaGators.com talking about how big this game is on Saturday against the Kentucky Wildcats. It'll be senior day. Um, should be a, an electric crowd in the O'Connell Center, uh, but we'll get Chris Harry's thoughts on, do the Gators have to? Do they? Is it a must beat the Kentucky Wildcats to have any opportunity? I personally think it is, but we'll get his thoughts as well. want to thank um, our college football analyst, Brent Beard, for joining us on the Titan MR Hotline, and Pizza Bill Feinberg giving us the uh, information on the Willie Jackson Leonard George Endowment Golf Tournament, April 2nd at the University of Florida Golf Course. Be a ton of old-time Gators out there, folks. If you if you like the Gators, you need to sign up or at least show up and uh, go get some pictures and some autographs and all that good stuff. Hope you enjoyed today's program. Make sure you tune in tomorrow. We'll see you then. Take care. 